contributions um, that he has made in my life, in the lives of other devotees from my Albany congregation, and his contributions to ISKCON and to Srila Prabhupada's movement. So I know it's going to take some time from the class, but please allow me to just share a little bit background about Rasnath Prabhu. I met him in the year 2002 when I joined the Albany Sangha. Um, the, you know, His Grace Yugal Kishore Prabhu had started this center and he later entrusted it uh, to the care of Rasparan Prabhu and Rasnath Prabhu. And Rasnath Prabhu used to come to our center every weekend and uh, he gave Bhagavad Gita classes and classes from CC and Bhagavatam from Friday through Sunday. So we would have a class on Friday evening Saturday class and then a Sunday class. And like Sukhdev Goswami, although very young in age, he was very well versed in scriptures and Sanskrit verses, you know, came out of his mouth, just like how Ganga flows effortlessly from the Himalayas. He was trained from the Radha Gopinath congregation in Chopati, Bombay. And uh, along with Raspara and Prabhu and Gopi Manjari Mataji, he established the same mood at our center. And I know I've been saying Albany Sangha and center and you know it kind of sounds fancy, but honestly it was a very old dilapidated building and uh, the infrastructure was such that it would look like any time you know either the door or the windows or the hinges would just fall off. And I'll be honest that that old building was held together by the selfless love affection and the effort of uh, Rasnath Prabhu, Rasparan Prabhu and Gopi Manjari Mataji. Um, my group, my congregation, Albany congregation that time was uh, mostly young college students. And Rasnath Prabhu incidentally um, was preaching to a group that was older than him. Um, most of us were older than him. He was only in his early twenties. And um, I'm going to draw a little parallel here. You know, Krishna promises protection in chapter 16, but he asks for surrender first. But Lord Nityananda and Mahaprabhu don't ask for anything. They just give Krishna prema freely without asking for qualifications. And that was his mood too. Rasnath Prabhu did not want anything from us. He did not expect anything from us. He just gave us Krishna. It was under his guidance and leadership, along with Rasnath, Rasparan Prabhu and uh, Gadadhar Pandit Prabhu, that we welcomed our uh, DT, Shinita Nadia Bihari, at the Albany Center. And in the weeks and months that followed, this team uh, of Rasnath Prabhu, Rasparan Prabhu, and Gopi Manjari Mataji completely transformed the lives of the 20 students that were part of the core group at the Albany Center. They trained us in scriptures. They trained us in cooking for Krishna. They trained us in celebrating festivals, in Vaishnava bhajans, in Vaishnava etiquette. And actually it was Rasnath Prabhu who introduced me to Pare Prabhu because it was because of his efforts that we invited Pare Mohan Prabhu to the first appearance day celebration of our DT Srinita Nadia Bihari. And how Rasnath Prabhu and Rasparan Prabhu Gopi Mataji trained us in those initial early days of Krishna consciousness is actually a lesson in parenting. We were never chastised. We never got any scolding regardless of how many mistakes we made in whatever service or whatever task we took up. Like just like how you have an infant child, you know, a three months old, wets the bed, spits up milk. You don't scold them, right? Because he doesn't know any better. That's how they were to us for the first two, three years. We never, like the time I spent in Albany, I never got a scolding. They were strict to themselves, but very lenient with us. And it was, it was actually like pure, unadulterated parental love. And, uh, you know, I moved out, but I continued going back to Albany again, only because of their love and affection. Uh, you know, we were like nincompoops and hooligans and they transformed us into devotees. And I'm speaking for myself and other devotees from the Albany congregation. And uh, I actually did not mention that uh, he's an IIT graduate. He has an MBA from Cornell. 
so he's accomplished not just uh, uh, spiritually and he has not just transformed the lives of uh, 20 students from the almani center but he is uh, very accomplished professionally as well and i don't remember exactly what year it was but somewhere around 2000 you know he was working in an investment bank um after graduating from the Corn- cornell mba program he had an extremely lucrative job which he quit and i'm like here's here's like you know somebody who's like like a goswami like sanatan goswami and rup goswami they kick the job of nawab husain shah and they you know decided to serve mahaprabhu so he quit his job and he moved into the brahmachari ashram and started serving temple full time and he was the you know it's taking care of uh, bhakti center that time i don't exact remember whether it was 3 years or 4 years he did that for couple of years and uh, um, i mentioned that he they raised us like you know like parents and you know there's a term empty nesting in us you know when children uh, when the you know the baby birds grow up they leave the nest and that's what their role has been in the last few years you know they they don't you know guide us on a every day to day basis on a grassroots level but if there is any problem or if there's any issue in life we actually go back to them and they they've trained us now to handle uh, you know low level and medium level challenges but if there is a high level problem then we still go back to them um so we are very grateful to uh, rasnath prabhu for uh, you know joining us today I'll mention that he lives with his uh, wonderful wife, uh, uh, Vrindavan Vinodni, and uh, daughter, very cute daughter, Niladri Ashre. Uh, they are close to the Brooklyn uh, Center, and they go to Bhakti Center and Brooklyn Temple. And uh, if not for the pandemic, I think we wouldn't have the opportunity to hear from him at the Sunday program. So thank you very much, Rasnath Prabhu. There is so much more to say, but the more I talk, the less people will get to hear from you. So. Thank you again. Okay. Hey, Krishna. Thank you for thank you for having me. And, uh, thank you for those words of kindness. I need encouragement in my life, especially in my spiritual life. And sometimes, just reminding how perhaps Krishna used you at some time in your life um, is very encouraging to keep yourself. Um, and hope that krishna will continue to use you the same way so that was uh, that was a very encouraging throw back in time and i very deeply appreciate it very well om namo bhagavate vasudevaya om namo bhagavate vasudevaya om namo bhagavate vasudevaya नारायण नमस्क नरम शरोतम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुदीर नष्ट प्राषु अभद्रेशु नि भागवत सेवया भगवतीतमश्लोक भक्तिर्भवति नैष्टिकी कृष्णा वासुदेवाय देवकी नंदनाय च नंदगोपकुमाय गोविंदय नमो नम नम ओं विष्णुपदाय कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदात स्वामी नामिने नमस्ते सारस्वते देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेषा शून्यवादी पाश्चातारिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधार श्रीवासदी गौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे कैन आई वांट टू एक्सटेंड माय डीपेस्ट ग्रैटिट्यूड टू प्यारे मोहन प्रभु एंड जीवा माथुर जी हु आर सच एग्जांपल्स ऑफ स्टडी डिवोशनल सर्विस फॉर सो मेनी इयर्स आई हैव ऑलवेज हैड सच such a, a pleasant experience coming to hartford and especially spending time in their association you get to laugh a lot uh, but there is also such a, a lightness simplicity and steadfastness 
in um, in their devotional service. And I, I think back and, and really pray to Krishna that um, I can be as steadfast as they are for years and years and years, uh, been serving, um, and taking care of so many people. So thank you for having me. Um, uh, today, I was thinking about what would be a good topic to discuss. And um, Amrita Keli Mataji refused to give me a topic. Um, so I asked her what was her favorite topic from the Srimad Bhagavatam that she would love to hear. And she said she loves the pastime of the churning of the milk ocean. So I thought this might be a reciprocation to her desire <laughs> for, for hearing from the Srimad Bhagavatam. So we will read a few verses from uh, the eighth canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam. And then uh, we can discuss. My hope is that you might also find this appropriate for the time that we are in right now. Uh, <clears throat> I hope my hope is also to give or leave extended time for Q&A. So I'll keep this class relatively brief um, so that we can spend more time in a discussion specifically if devotees had points to share and realizations to share, but also if you have any specific questions to ask, we have enough time. Is that okay? Is that good enough? Okay. So I'm gonna share my screen and uh, we can read the verses uh, quickly along with a couple of purports. Can everyone see my screen? Is it clear? Yeah? Okay. Okay, thank you. So this is from uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 8, Chapter 6, Text 17. We'll read 17, 18, 19, and 20. Um, and the context behind this um, the setting that we're just about to enter and uh, pretty much, I'm sure most of you are familiar with the pastime of the churning of the milk ocean. And this is the beginning of that episode where uh, because of a curse by Sage Durvasa, the demigods have actually lost their opulence. And as usual, when the demigods lose something, uh, which you see how is characteristic of someone who actually considers Krishna um, their protector, uh, but also is attached to things of the material world, uh, then they typically run to, to either Brahma or Shiva to get some guidance. And then Brahma and Shiva usually tend to direct them to let's go and pray to Vishnu. So the demigods along with headed by Brahma and Shiva have now come and uh, there is an entire chapter on the glorification of Vishnu. And then Vishnu finally appears and um, then Vishnu appears, he gives the demigods some instructions. And so we will look at what those instructions are. Um, so text 17, Eka eve shwaras tasmin surakarye sureshwaraha vihartu kamastanaha samudron mantana dibihi. Although the Supreme Personality of Godhead the master of the demigods was capable of performing the activities of the demigods by himself. He wanted to enjoy pastimes in the churning, in churning the ocean. Therefore, he spoke as follows. So what does Vishnu say? Shri Bhagavan Uvacha, Anta Brahman Nahoshambo, He Deva Mamabhashitam, Shunvata Vahita Sarve, the Supreme Personality of God had said, O oh Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva and other demigods, please hear me with great attention for what I say will bring good fortune for all of you. As long as you are not flourishing, you should make a truce with the demons and asuras who are now being favored by time. Purport. One word in this verse has two readings, kalena and kavyena. 
Kalena means favored by time and Kavena means favored by Shukracharya. Shukracharya being the spiritual master of the Daityas. The demons and Daityas were favored in both ways. And therefore, the demigods were advised by the Supreme Lord to execute a truce for the time being until time favored them. Arayopihi Sandhyaya Sati Karyartha Gaurave Ahi Mushika Vateva Kya Arthasya Padavim Gati Gatai O demigods, fulfilling one's own interests is so important that one may even have to make a truce with one's enemies. For the sake of one's self-interest, one has to act according to the logic of the snake and the mouse. A snake and a mouse were once caught in a basket. Now, since the mouse is food for the snake, this was a good opportunity for the snake. However, since both of them were caught in the basket, even if the snake ate the mouse, the snake would not be able to get out. Therefore, the snake thought it wise to make a truce with the mouse and ask the mouse to make a hole in the basket so that both of them could get out. The snake's intention was that after the mouse made the hole, the snake would eat the mouse and escape the basket through the hole, escape from the basket through the hole. This is called the logic of the snake and the mouse. Okay, so where are we going with this? <laughs> uh, so the situation again, as I described before, the demigods are in, um, the demigods are in a lot of misery. Um, it's very painful. They have lost their home. They have lost their opulence. Uh, they were really suffering. And in this condition, they actually come to Vishnu. Um, and so Vishnu is advised to them, um, very wise instructions. So first thing that Mahavishnu does is when he's advising, and the Bhagavatam so beautifully explains this. The Bhagavatam first says by, starts by saying that although Vishnu could have done restored the glory of the demigods all on his own. Um, he did not do it. And it's described here that he wanted to enjoy a pastime. Right? So many times uh, when we go to Krishna for when we are in situations where you know, life is difficult, um, things are not going our way, we go to Krishna for help. And that's a, that's a very... That's a very natural thing. And also for a devotee specifically, that's the best thing to do is to go to Krishna, no matter what's happening in life, to actually turn to Krishna for help. Uh, but when we approach Krishna in from a place of Krishna actually doing things for us, then many times uh, we might find ourselves a little disappointed because the results don't come. <laughs> Uh, we, we, we would like for Krishna to actually take away the suffering and longer the suffering also perhaps carry responsibility for our lives. And Krishna sometimes says, uh, no. <laughs> uh, and the next verse is so beautiful. He also says that I am, what I'm going to speak to you is, please hear me with great attention. But what I say will bring good fortune for all of you. So what he's going to say now, he's assuring and he's and Krishna's Mahavishnu is explaining his intention very clearly. That my intention is not to abandon you. My intention is not to uh, to watch to have. So Krishna is not a sadistic god, right? Krishna is not someone who actually derives pleasure. So sometimes it happens that when we give someone advice and they don't listen to our advice. I've done this, I have done this several times. <laughs> they don't listen to our advice and then they fall in trouble and they come back to you. And then you're almost willing, <laughs> you know, there's that small state of So, so it, somehow we want to drive home the point. See, I told you, didn't I? <laughs> or we, we, want to, we want to make sure, we want to like, okay, you know what? Um, it's good you didn't you didn't listen to me. So like that that is it, we still make it about ourselves. We uh, it it still comes from a place of you know the ego. Even if our advice was correct, uh, we have a desire that our advice be followed, <laughs> right? 
Right. And somehow if someone doesn't take our advice, we feel very upset sometimes. Um, we also hold it. Um, but Vishnu is not coming from that place. It's so beautiful when he says that, I'm only telling you this because what I say will bring about good fortune for all of you. That's what I desire for you. Um, so his intention um, so beautifully conveys, so Mahavishnu conveys his intention that ultimately it's for Shreyo. He says that uh, for your good fortune, for your Shreyas, for your progress. So one way of understanding the word Shreya is fortune. Uh, another way of understanding Shreya is Shreyas is his progress. So this is exclusively, what I'm saying is exclusively for your progress, for your good, for your ultimate benefit. Right. Then, so then it creates some anticipation here, right? Uh, so, and someone says that we have an idea in our minds as to what our benefit will look like. So when we are desperately in trouble, uh, the idea in our mind usually is, okay, so then if I do this, this, and this, it'll be all, it'll be all taken care of. We want a prescription, typically. Um, and we also have an idea of what that final outcome looks like for us. In fact, when we come with a prayer, many times when we come with a prayer, we, uh, we are not just coming with a prayer, but we are also coming with a prescription. <laughs> and it's very, it's very, uh, uh, it's sometimes subtle, it's sometimes not so subtle, that we actually tell Krishna what we want. And again, in devotional service, we are encouraged to do that. And at the same time, uh, you know, Krishna the Chaitanya Charitamrita says, uh, Mahaprabhu, Mahaprabhu is quoting how Krishna looks at it. And Mahaprabhu says that Krishna is Krishna's thinking, you know, this living entity is asking for, you know, material pleasures, material desires, some material gain. But I'm not, you know, I'm not so I, I'm not so foolish. So what I'm going to do here is actually make the living entity ultimately develop a taste for my lotus feet, because when that happens, then the living entity doesn't have to suffer anymore. So the map that Krishna or Vishnu has for our lives is much bigger than the map that we will ever have. That's the first thing that we as devotees have to recognize. Uh, secondly, what we have to recognize is that the map that Vishnu has, <laughs> even when it's bigger, may not exactly chalk the path that we have chalked for ourselves. And sometimes that can be scary. Many times that can be scary because we are attached to a certain way of working, a certain way of life. Um, and especially when we come to devotional service, the equation of our life starts to shift. Krishna starts to take very personal, a lot of personal interest in our life. Right. So Krishna is saying in the Bhagavad Gita that, that for the for one who thinks about me constantly, Ananyas Chintayantumam, Ejana Pariupaste Te Sham Nityabiyuktanam, I carry what the person has, I preserve what the person has, and I give the person what the person lacks. Right. And so what we lack, um, Many times, when we say what I lack, many times we lack in humility, which is the key ingredient in our devotional service. And Krishna gives us humility. But humility is a very interesting, um, see humility doesn't come with the press of a button. Humility comes with experiences. And C.S. Lewis, who is a, a famous Christian theologian, um, he says that before humility comes humiliation. Um, it's the it's the the, the uh, the humility is such a quality that when we have humility, we can be happy about having it. <laughs> because the moment we become happy about having it, we lose it. <laughs> humility itself is the experience. 
right? And that's why the beauty of humility is only Krishna can taste it. Because the living entity, when the living entity is humble, the living entity actually feels very disqualified. And quote, unquote, the experience, the real experience of humility is, um, is um, it's not pleasant for the ego. Let's put it that way. Right? Just like how, you know, and when, when, when I quoted C.S. Lewis earlier, humiliation comes before humility. There is always some experience that the ego is actually crushed in some way. That's what humiliation is. Because this, for the soul, there is no real humiliation. Uh, there is no humiliation for the soul. But the ego is, the ego has a lot to lose. The ego by nature is very fragile. Um, by its very existence, it knows that it's temporary. And that's why we have to do so many things to prop it up. Right? Uh, we have to, we need repeated appreciation for us to feel good about ourselves. So, so the, the, the ego is by nature fragile, and because it's fragile, um, it, it, it fights really hard to protect itself. And so humiliation is only for the ego, it's not for, it's not for the soul. But that humiliation for the ego gives rise to the humility of the soul. And the humility of the soul, the natural state of the soul, emerges from, um, from that humility. So um, many times, um, good fortune in spiritual life comes from the development of that humility. And so when we go to Krishna sometimes with our problems, Krishna asks us to step into the waiting room. And the waiting room is an interesting place. Recently, um, His Holiness Sachinandan Maharaj was talking to us. Um, and he was talking about the concept of the waiting room. So this is a term that I directly borrowed from what he shared with us just about a month ago, maybe a little more than that. And he said that the waiting room is a place where we have to wait. <laughs> Right. We have all been to the doctor's office sometimes and we are made to wait outside. Um, so that's the waiting room. Now, uh, when Mahavishnu in this verse is saying, as long as you're not flourishing, you should make a truce with the demons and the asuras who are now being favored by time. What Vishnu is telling is time is not in your favor right now. So the question may be asked, Krishna in the Gita says what? Time I am, <laughs> right? So Krishna is time himself. So if he wants, then he can do anything. He can change time. He can change a circumstance in the snap of a finger. Like it's not, it's not difficult at all. And, and yet he chooses not to. So this is a conscious choice. Krishna is saying now time is, so Krishna doesn't many times choose to interfere with the currents of the material world. And that's not because he's heartless, but because the material world has lessons to teach us. It is actually working for Krishna. Right? And so when uh, Mahavishnu is saying, you're not being, you know, the, the demons, the asuras are being favored by time. Time is not in your favor right now. He's asking the demigods to step into the waiting room. Right. So usually when we say, <laughs> this is the experience of waiting rooms, right? What is the first question that comes to mind when you're in a waiting room? What is that? How much longer? How much longer, right? Like how long? It's, it's a natural, it's a natural question, okay asking me to wait, how long, how long should I wait? And so the response from Vishnu is, is um, he doesn't really give an answer. <laughs> there is no, typically that's the, that's the, the, the mind always thinking, okay, I can wait, but how long can, how long should I wait? And if you give me a time, then I, then I know what I'll do is I will, I'll go make myself busy for a little while and then I'll come back. 
And that's how the material mind thinks. If if Krishna were to say, you know what, you will, you know, in this in this life, you know, you may not be able to attain full full devotional service. Okay, Krishna, then maybe I can enjoy in this life, and then maybe next life. Let's. That's just the nature of the material mind. It actually it, it tries to optimize everything. It's fruit. It's <laughs> it wants the result without the process. That's what we look for many times is how can I get the result <laughs> without actually going through the process? Right. Uh, that's the culture of you know instant everything. You know, you don't have to cook at home, everything will come prepared. You know, it's just you just put it in a pot and gets ready. So uh, but devotional service doesn't happen that way. It can't. Uh, the process is equally perhaps even more important. Than the outcome because the process is the outcome eventually right it's amazing the, what we have is the experience of what we will be doing in the spiritual world <laughs> that's what devotional service is it's not different what we are doing today in the material world serving krishna is exactly the kind of things that we will be doing in the spiritual world to be serving krishna right the the exact form of it may be different but it still it will it will still require hard work. I was sharing with my wife the other day. We were just talking, and she was just saying, "And it's like, you know, every day it just feels like the same thing. Wake up in the morning, you know, brush our teeth, take a shower, <laughs> and then you know, I was just sharing with her, like, yeah, the spiritual world will be like, yeah, every day there is a routine. You know, we'll have to pick flowers, we'll have to string a garland." You know, we'll have to take the garland to some servant of Srimati Radharani who will then, you won't even be able to, but this is the routine, but then there is excitement about it. Right? It's very, it's like, I look forward to the next day. <laughs> In the material world, we may not, we may not get that same experience because the ego is looking for gratification, not necessarily looking for what the soul ultimately wants. Which is service to Krishna. But in the practice of devotional service, we are being trained to do exactly what we would in the spiritual world. That's not different. So the, the idea of how long, you know, it's a very genuine question because suffering in the material world, to be in a material body, to go through the suffering that we go through in the material world is a difficult condition. And so we have to be eager to go back. And at the same time, it doesn't happen based on our desire. It happens in Krishna's time. And that is the waiting room. So when Krishna asks us to step, and that may come in different ways. It may come as a circumstance in our life. Uh, sometimes it may come as, sometimes the entire life sometimes can be waiting room. Um, but when Krishna is asking us to step into the waiting room, what he is also asking for us to do is to not just sit quiet. But in this case, we will see what is uh, Mahavishnu asking the demigods to do. Um, he's saying we should make a truce with the demons and asuras. Now, can you imagine? <laughs> This can happen in a temple setting. You have had a very strong argument with the devotee. Like, it's like, you know, you've said things, you've done things, it's like really intense. And now, you know, you're being asked to like now cooperate. It's not easy for the ego to do that. Right? When you have to cooperate with someone that you don't agree with, it's like the hardest thing for the ego to do. So Vishnu is not asking the demigods to just sit silent, right? He is asking them to humble themselves. But he gives, it, he gives the dose in such a way that it actually makes it attractive for them. <laughs> but at the same time, just imagine for them to actually go back to their own kingdom, which is now being ruled by Bali Maharaj. 
to go into into the same room, the same throne that Indra was sitting in now to see <laughs> Bali Maharaj sit and then extend a hand <laughs> of peace. That is some acknowledgement of weakness. Right? That is an acknowledgement of some sort of, well, you know what? I'm helpless right now. <laughs> and the ego hates that. Right, so the waiting room is a time for us to wait, but also is a time for um, the ego and its purification to happen. Right? And when we recognize that that's what's happening in the waiting room, that that's what Krishna wants for, our, for us at this time is to experience um, the washing away of the ego in some way. And again, I'm not saying this experience is easy. I'm just saying that this experience is a necessity for, uh, for our pure self, the soul to emerge in Krishna's um, And when we look at that waiting room and that time as the time that Krishna is actually asking for us to work on our ego, and continue the process of really just, just really purifying ourselves and waiting for Krishna's mercy to come. Then the way we will look at that time, that doesn't mean we stop prayer. Our prayers intensify more. Um, our service intensifies more. Uh, and it's also important for us to, um, to also really look deep inside and see what are the things that are preventing ourselves from truly, truly surrendering to Krishna's desire. And to really pray for those things to be actually taken out. And sometimes they may happen by, um, like for example, we might have to actually bridge some relationships in this material world. We might have to bridge relationships that we have you know, it's, uh, out of our own egos have said, you know what, I'm not going to talk to that person. Um, sometimes it might be important to just pick up the phone and have a conversation. Um, so uh, it, it, it just very deeply looking into, into, inside our own hearts and ask ourselves, what are the things that I need to resolve? What are the things that, uh, that I need to remove um, for the ego to ultimately dissolve completely. And that's what the waiting room is. And the waiting room is such a, um, you know, it's such a petri dish when we understand this, this waiting room properly, that Krishna is, this is what Krishna wants of me at this time. Even when the results of what we want are not exactly coming the way we want for them to come. Um, recognizing what Krishna's desire perhaps is in my life and doing what is necessary. And Prabhupada used to quote this verse so often, Tattenu kampam susamikshamano gunjana evatma kritam vitagam hridvak vapurbir vidadana namaste jiveta yom mukti pade sadaya bhakti. Um, the, the experience of humility and meekness is not that the devotee, and this is the, this is the understanding of humility, so many times humility seems like helplessness. Yes, the devotee is helpless. The reason why the devotee is helpless is because the devotee has made a decision not to invest in the ego anymore. So that, that decision is, is a decision of strength. It's it, the meekness that a devotee experiences is very different than the meekness that we see in the material world when somebody doesn't have a resource or somebody doesn't have money. The meekness of a devotee is a strong decision not to invest in the ego anymore. I will not defend myself. Right? I will let, if somebody is saying something, incorrect or bad about me, I'm not going to step in and defend. I'm not going to try and prove that I'm right. I will let 
Krishna do what what he desires is the best in my life. And that takes a lot of strength. So when Brahma is quoting this verse, the Tenu Kampam, he's actually talking about the devotee who has decided voluntarily to enter into the waiting room. And the decision to enter into the waiting room is, and Prabhupada speaks it in the Bhagavad Gita in chapter two, um, in a purport, now, Prabhupada says that how uh, when somebody starts their spiritual life truly, they have actually made a decision not to invest in material energy anymore. And Prabhupada says, that doesn't mean material desires will go away, right? The 10th offense against the holy name is what? Amrita Kelly, you were about to say something. Not having faith in the holy name even after hearing, uh, is that the 10th one? To maintain material desires, even after understanding so many instructions on this matter. Yeah. Right? So that so the, so the idea there is not to have material desires, but to maintain them. There is a difference. Because we are conditioned, we will have material desires. But maintaining material desires is consciously watering them. And that's the decision that the devotee makes. I will not. Whatever I have now, I have to live them out. But I'm actually so, I have made the decision not to invest in them anymore. And it's a hard decision. We, when we make that choice, we're actually stepping into Krishna's shelter. Because Krishna now, I will no longer use the ego to actually defend myself or protect myself. I put myself in your care. Right. And in that time, it's not that we will not be going through difficulty, but we choose to act in ways that will only please Krishna. And then the result of that is, you know, the spiritual world becomes the rightful inheritance. So what's interesting about this is the process is the time may not be guaranteed, but the, the result is guaranteed. And many times the, 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 the time is a function of, it's amazing, the time is a function of our uh, excitement about waiting. <laughs> it's so paradoxical. But that famous story in, uh, in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, uh, and Ramnath Maharaj tells the story very often of, of, of Mukunda. And when Mahaprabhu actually says that he will see me in 10, uh, during the Mahaprakash Lila, he says that he'll see me after 10 million births. Mukunda's ex only 10 million births, the excitement there, right? Uh, and the hope that, that so the, what is that hope? The hope is that the result is guaranteed. Right. And like in the material world, nothing is guaranteed. <laughs> Krishna gives the complete guarantee of the result. Uh, so that is what the living entity, especially in the waiting room, uh, derives a lot of strength from. And that, that culture in the waiting room becomes a culture of enthusiasm, patience, and confidence. The three ingredients that Rupa Goswami talks about in the Nectar of Instruction, Utsaha Rishya Dariya. That is the convergence. The waiting room becomes the convergence of those three qualities. Utsaha, because there is excitement about continuing even when we don't know how long. Nishchaya is the patience to wait. And Dhairya is the confidence the, that the result will come, that Krishna is taking care. Right? And that is what ultimately brings us closer to Krishna. So I'd like just like to stop there and ask if there are any reflections, questions, comments, anything at all, I'd be happy to take it this time. Excellent lecture, Rasanath Prabhu, just what I wanted to hear <laughs> or needed to hear, as I should say. Uh, this is Geetha Mala. Is this, I uh, do. Yes, yes. So, so. No, go ahead. You were saying something. So, so good to, so good to, 
No, I was just saying, so good to hear from you. I, uh, I, when I think about your name, I always think about how thoughtfully Narendra Swami gave you the name. Uh, <laughs> Bhakti Vinod Thakur's. Yes, uh, yes, yes. Yeah, it's a very, <laughs> very close to his heart too. <laughs> I, I hope I <laughs> live up to that name. Um, I had a, a question also. Yes. Um, so it was very interesting that you said when we give advice to someone and they don't take it and uh, and then you know obviously it was the right advice <laughs> but then it's so easy to say i told you so <laughs> how do you react without saying i told you so when they <laughs> recognize that <laughs> um um, the when somebody comes back to us, they have actually. It's interesting uh, why they would. When someone comes to us after we have given them the advice and have not followed it, they're already humbling themselves. Mm -hmm. We don't have to humble them anymore. <laughs> At that point, uh, what might be helpful is to ask them a couple of questions. So. So it seems like we discussed this and I want to understand what changed for you. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, and, and in that process, what you do is you understand what this, how this person has been thinking. How this and person has been what? How this person has been thinking and how this person is thinking. Oh. Mm -hmm. Right. And, um, what will also be important here is to see and understand, uh, am I upset because this person didn't take my advice? Mm. Or uh, do I really care so much about this person um, that when the person doesn't take the advice, I feel so bad that this person is going to cause more trouble for himself or herself? Right, right. Yeah, that, that, there's a question there too. How do you deal with that? <laughs> So, so sometimes the sense of urgency is a very, like when we so deeply love someone. So I'll come back to picking up the thread from where I left off mm -hmm. uh, about asking the question. So I'll just park it for a moment. Um, when we feel very deep affection for someone, sometimes there is that impatience. And Krishna is also like, you know, urging us. But that impatience should, uh, should not drive away the person. Mm. So, like, you have to know where the boundary of that impatience is. Right, right. Sometimes when we become impatient, even when it's coming from the right place, the person mm -hmm. is not ready. We actually overwhelm the person. Exactly. With good intention, yeah. we overwhelm the person. Mm -hmm. So it's important to recognize where the boundary is, how to actually keep the person uh, and create a sense of urgency without necessarily overwhelming the person. That takes a lot of maturity. Mm -hmm. I have mm -hmm. seen very extremely mature devotees alone be able to walk that line. Right, right. It takes a lot of practice <laughs> and a lot of maturity to, I've seen that with my own spiritual master. Uh, he will give the same advice. <laughs> and you can see sometimes, you know, he's eager for you to actually step into it. But then at the same time, he'll say, you know, but ultimately, the decision is yours. <laughs> and never taking control of the free will of the living entity. Um, so that's like basically our boundary, that we never impose our free will on. Um, and at the same time, also continue to care. Um, so that's, uh, that's how we work with that. But the other side of it is when, you know, when we are, when somebody comes back, it's always good to ask questions to the other person. Okay, so, so, um, so what changed for you? You know, is there something that you learned from your experience? So you're helping the person perhaps reflect back on the conversation that you might have had earlier without you actually telling the person, hey, I told you so. The important thing here is a lesson, not you. And as long as the person has actually understood the lesson, great, no problem. I hope that helps.
Is there anybody else who has a question or a comment? Thank you for the answer. It was really good. <laughs> Rasnat Prabhu, I really like the concept of waiting room. And we actually see that in Bhagavatam, right? Bharat Maharaj became dear and then became Jad Bharat and then went back to Godhead. Yeah. Chitraketu Maharaj became Vritasura and then went back to Godhead. Indradumna Maharaj became Gajendra and then went back to Godhead. So very, very important concept. Um, but hearing it for the first time, thank you for sharing that. Uh, well, it's such it's such in the Maharaj. He talks he talks a lot about the waiting room. I think uh, it's a very powerful understanding of what we need to do. But also in Narada Muni, the first canto. Right, right. It's amazing how I mean I would be pretty disappointed if I heard a message like that. <laughs> you know, unfortunately, you will not be able to see me in this lifetime. <laughs> After all of this, oh my God, it's just I would be I would be super disappointed. But the way he accepts it, mm -hmm. um, it, it's amazing. The way we accept Krishna's desire actually determines whether we have attained pure devotional service or not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's not about going back to the spiritual world; it's the experience of our relationship with Krishna in the material world. Mm -hmm. It's, 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 that's the, that's again, it's paradoxical, but it's like when, when we, and in the waiting room, there is an experience of Krishna. The experience of Krishna is, we begin to experience Krishna even when we are not with him personally, yeah. which is what keeps us going every day. Yeah. Right? At the same time, we're asking, where is Krishna? But in that experience of where is Krishna, Krishna is there. It's, it's just, this is Mahaprabhu's, like this, the, the whole thing about separation and service and separation is we as living entities in the material world are in some ways fortunate to experience the highest devotional service because in asking the question, where is Krishna? Krishna, I really want you. Mm. Krishna is present in that prayer. Mm. It's, it's amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else has a question or a comment? I, I also liked his humiliation comes before humility. <laughs> <laughs> a full, full experience of that. <laughs> Uh, it's, a, it's a scary it's a scary thought but uh, it is right <laughs> uh, so it's the, better better to cultivate humility before yes, humiliation that's, comes. Yeah. that's it that's it uh, what happens is then you are proactive about it <laughs> <laughs> instead of uh, instead of it happening yeah. <laughs> most of us are not we need that big knockdown before humility comes you know, you know it's it's um it's interesting how um we're all walking in that direction in some ways. Old age is pretty, like, it's a pretty humbling experience. It definitely is, yeah. Uh, I'm seeing, I'm, I'm, 40, I'm 41 now, and I'm seeing where I'm headed. <laughs> I had back pain last week, and I was just thinking about this. Man. It's like, you know, but the body is already falling apart. <laughs> and I will be a grumpy old man, <laughs> you know, <laughs> very soon the grumpiness is a result of the like my, my my body that was such a source of my identity no longer is serving what do i do at that time it's just so important to cultivate um yeah really thinking about krishna much before we get there Prabhu, do you want to say anything? Maybe she's getting ready for Arti. Arti, yeah. Uh, yeah. That's, that's, yeah. yeah. I'll, be, I'll be careful with my use of I told you so, Rasnath Prabhu. Gets used most with Anand Goranga Prabhu, a little less with kids, but there are like 10 moments a day when that gets used. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, I've, I've been, I've been, uh, I mean, I've kind of, uh, you can ask my wife and she'll be, she'll be happy to share how many times I have, unfortunately. Heard that or said that or both. <laughs> or like indirectly said that. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> you know? It's not just saying it directly. Sometimes it's like you have to add an effect of like, you know, just some extra. Yeah, facial expression. <laughs> yeah, oh, no. Oh. I wonder who gave you that advice. <laughs> you could totally, totally relate to Vrindavan, you know, me doing that. <laughs> no, I, I do that to her. Okay, you do that, okay. <laughs> so it's not, yeah. So, so, anyway. Good, okay. Okay. So if nobody okay. has any questions or comments, okay. really okay. deeply appreciate. Thank you all for, okay. for being here. Thank you. Thank much. you very much, Rasnath Prabhu. Thank you. Prabhu Pat Pijay. His Grace Rasnath Prabhu Ki. Jai. Prabhu Pad Ki. Gaur Premanande. Thank you, Rasnath Prabhu. Very well. Hare Krishna, we have three minutes more to start uh, our Aarti. Uh, if uh, anyone would like to uh, chant for two, three minutes before Jiva Mataji comes, that would be great. I think who is the one? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Sorry, Pranadaji, should I? No, no, I was just going to say that whoever is leading Kirtan today can maybe start a little early. But go ahead, Malthipri. I didn't mean to stop you. That's okay. I think, if, okay. I'll just uh, wait till the conch blows. Okay. Uh, I'll sing till that. Okay. okay. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Jaya Jagana, Jaya Jagana, Jaya Baladev, Jaya Subhadra, Jaya Jagana, Jaya Jagana, Jaya Subhadra, Jaya Gaurani Thai, Jaya Gaurani Thai, Gaurani Thai, Jaya Gaurani Thai. Shri Jalanath Balen Subhadra Maharani Ki Jai. Jai. Shri Shri Gaurani Thai Ki Jai.
Oh, my God. 
Shri Shri Radha Krishna Gopa Gopinath Shama Kunda Radha Kunda Giri Govanan Ki Jai Vrindavan Dham Ki Jai Mayapur Dham Ki Jai Jagannath Puri Dham Ki Jai 
Ganga Mai Ki Jai, Jamuna Mai Ki Jai, Bhakti Devi Ki Jai, Shri Mati Mahadi Ki Jai, the Jagannath Pal Dev Subhadra Devi Ki Jai, Shri Shri Gorni Tai Ki Jai, Shri Shri Gorni Tai Ki Jai, Gaur Nishinga Dev Ki Jai, Shri Shalagam Sivas Ki Jai, Shri Giraj Maharaj Ki Jai, Samaveta Bhakta Vinda Ki Jai, Gaur Premanandi. Haribo. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories, all glories to Sri Sri Guru and Garanga. Glories to Sri Prabhupada. Shall I start? have uh, someone to yeah shall i start yeah okay namaste <laughs> Ganya Kashi Pur Vakshaha Ganya Kashi Pur Vakshaha Sila Tanta Nakalaye Sila Tanta Nakalaye To Nasimho Yato yato ya mita to na simho, to yato ya mita to na simho, ta hir simho ra da hir simho, hir simho ra da hir simho, nara simha ma din charanam tapake, nara simha ma din charanam tapake. Tava kaya tamada bari aka aguta shenga dalita hiranya kashi por taro brinda kesha vadita nara hari rupa jay jagadisha hari Jai Jagadish Hare Tava Kara Tamala Bari Naka Madhuta Shringa Dalita Hiranya Kashi Pur Tano Vinga Kesha Vadrita Nara Hari Rupa Jai Jagadish Hare Jai Jagadish Hare Jai Jagadish Hare Jaya Nasimha Dev Jaya Nasimha Dev Jaya Nasimha Dev Jaya Simha Dev Jaya Pralad Maharaj Jaya Pralad Maharaj Jaya Pralad Maharaj Jaya Pralad Maharaj Jaya Lakshmi Narsimha Jaya Lakshmi Narsimha Jaya Lakshmi Narsimha Jaya Lakshmi Narsimha Jaya Jaya Prabhupada 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 Jaya Jaya Prabhupada Satsangha Dev Bhagavan Ki Jaya Pralad Maharaj Ki Jaya Shala Prabhupada Ki Jaya Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, everybody, for joining us for our Sunday program this week. 
we had such a wonderful class today from Rasanath Prabhu. I'll go ahead and share my screen. So we have three free sponsors today. Damodar Swaroop Prabhuji, Badmalochani Mataji and Tulasi are sponsoring today's program for Krishangi and Krishna Priya. Hari Bol! We also have Anonymous sponsoring for Ann Tarnowitz. Hari Bol! And we also have Anonymous sponsoring for someone, Anonymous. Hari Bol! <laughs> So if any on any of you are interested in sponsoring any of our Sunday programs, you can be one of the sponsors for only one hundred and twenty five dollars for our regular Sunday programs. And, uh, you know, for that, you can contact His Grace Pyare Mohan Prabhuji or Her Grace Jeeva Mataji at the temple phone number displayed on your screen. Is anonymous sponsoring for themselves? <laughs> <laughs> no, Prabhuji, I believe they're sponsoring uh, for someone else. Okay. Uh, That's what I thought, but. <laughs> and uh, special thanks this week to Suma, Kavish, and Rujul for flowers cleaning and preparing service. Haribo! Oh. Yeah, look at the flower garlands, how beautiful they are. Yes, Suma Mataji has done a wonderful job along with Kavish and Rujul. Thank you so much for that service. DTs are looking beautiful today. Wait, who, they, did they do the garlands or they just worked with the flowers? Uh, I think they helped in preparing uh, the cleaning of the flowers. I think Jiva Mataji might have all the details. Pratap Prabhu's family has been uh, helping with the flower service this week. Well, we had no help with cleaning the flowers this week. We just wanted to uh, uh, share our appreciation with them. Yeah. Yeah, they have to clean the flower, take off the leaves. It's a, it's a whole process, you know. It takes a few hours. It takes a while. Yeah, we had a lot of flowers this week. So we really appreciate their help. The garlands were done by uh, Rashmi and Prakash again. And Jai Radhe did the vases. Hari Bol. Thank you, Rashmi Mataji, Prakash Prabhuji, Jai Radhe Mataji, and Pratap Prabhuji's family. Talking of our... A uh, big upcoming festival, Govardhan Puja, is going to be celebrated by ISKCON of Connecticut on November 15th. It, Haribo! It'll be available uh, for participation online on Zoom and Facebook, directly from the Glastonbury Temple. Uh, of course, because of COVID situation, uh, in-person attendance is being restricted. Uh, volunteers are going to prepare and arrange uh, the program and bring to you live uh, through the via the online telecast. Uh, we will have circumambulation, Abhishek, Chappan Bhoga offering. So stay tuned uh, and please try to join the program online on November 15th. And we are starting at uh, normal time, right, Ras Prabhu? Uh, 345? 330. So November 15th, 330, we're going to start our Govindan Puja celebrations. And you can be a sponsor for only $151 if you wish to take part in Govardhan Puja celebrations. You can, of course, uh, join us online along with, uh, you know, any willingness to participate, uh, willingness to sponsor along with that. We have Ikadashi coming up on Wednesday, that is November 11th. Haribol! It is recommended for those of us who can to fast from grains and beans on that day and also, you know, undertake uh, more spiritual activities like uh, reading more of Srila Prabhupada's books, engaging in uh, more chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. And fast break is going to be on uh, Thursday, November 12th. We're going to have our special Ikadashi Bhajan Kirtan program this Wednesday from 5.45 to 6.45 in the evening. 
can find our regular online programs. We're having a host of online programs these days. Uh, you can find all of the details on our ISKCON of Connecticut website. Here's a quick snapshot. Uh, the latest edition is Damodar uh, Throughout the month of Karthik, we're going to have it from 6.45 to 7 in the evening, uh, Monday through Saturday, and Sunday during our Sunday programs, we are having it. And uh, the participation details are also available on our website. It's the standard is kind of Connecticut Zoom. World Gita Day, as we have been mentioning in our uh, previous Sunday programs, is on December 25th. And it's a great opportunity to, to gift and distribute Srimad Bhagavad, uh, Srimad Bhagavad Gita. So we have special offers on Bhagavad Gita sets. And if you are interested, please do contact Ganpati Govind Prabhuji. And also you can contact our temple phone number. You can call up our temple phone number for more details. In fact, we had a, a great distribution of books and prasadam today at a homeless shelter at Hartford. Uh, thanks to Srinivas Acharya Prabhuji's family, uh, Ankur Prabhuji, Ganpati Govind Prabhuji. In fact, we had a full-fledged program. We had Sugopi Mataji's class. We had Kirtan uh, along with distribution of books and prasadam. So, uh, a big hurry bowl to the entire book distribution team. Hurry! And now we will have more chanting for our free sponsors. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama Rama Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare
Jai. Hari Hari Bol. Damodar Swaru Prabhu Ji, Padmalojani Mata Ji, Tulasi Ki Jai. Jai. Krishangi and Krishna Priya Ki Jai. Our anonymous sponsor and anonymous beneficiaries Ki Jai. And Tarnovitz Ki Jai. Thank you very much again, everyone, for joining us this evening for our Sunday program. And we hope to see you again in our upcoming programs. And please remember that we have Govardhan Puja upcoming. We wish to have a lot of participation from all of you in our uh, Govardhan Puja celebrations next Sunday. Hare Krishna. We will take a closer darshan for lordships before we end our program today people Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, everyone. Hare Krishna. Thank you, everyone. We are ending our program. We'll see you next week. Hare Krishna.